the Buddha started his meditation instructions for Rahula by saying, make your mind like earth. Pleasant things, unpleasant things happen. People throw garbage on the earth, but the earth doesn't react. People could pour perfume on the earth, and the earth doesn't react. It learns endurance. Of course, the earth doesn't have to learn endurance, but the mind has to learn endurance. This is one of the basic lessons in the meditation. That's why the Buddha put it first. Because if you're going to understand anything, see anything clearly, you have to make sure you're not being reactive. Because you see things clearly as they come. And as for your likes and dislikes, you want to put them aside. Our problem is that we slap a like on it or a dislike on it almost before we even know what it is. And sometimes it is before we know what it is. So no wonder we live in a world that's just plastered over. We're going to get to see things as they are. So try to make your mind as non-reactive as possible. It's not the goal, that's for sure. And it's not the totality of meditation, but it's one of the conditions. The Buddha, after all, said that when he looked for a student, he looked for someone who was honest and observant. And if you're going to be honest and observant, you have to be honest about what you're adding to the situation. Because as the Buddha said, it turns out that the suffering that weighs us down, that eats into the heart, is not the unpleasant things happening outside, unpleasant things happening from sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, or ideas. It's the pleasant, unpleasant things coming from our own craving. And you'll be clean to these things. This is me. This is mine. This is my view. This is my way of doing things. This is who I am. These are the things I want. It all seems so natural every day. We take it as our basic survival techniques. But the Buddha says, these are the things that are causing us suffering. So if you can't look into your own mind and see where you're causing the suffering, you're not going to see anything. You're just going to continue to see the world as it's plastered over with your likes and dislikes. You've got to learn how to undo that habit so you can really be observant, non-reactive. And then when you're observant and non-reactive, then you're in a position to decide what really needs to be done. Remember that the Buddha set forth as the basic framework of his teachings, not the three characteristics, but the Four Noble Truths. And the Four Noble Truths carry duties. You want to be able to recognize when something comes up in the mind, is this clinging, is this craving, or is it part of the path? Because there are some desires that are part of the path, and you have to be able to make a clear distinction. Once you make a clear distinction, then you know what to do, in line with the duty of each truth. The three characteristics don't have any duties, but they can be part of the duties in the context of the Four Noble Truths. We're trying to let go of our cravings so that we can comprehend our sufferings. And so the three characteristics that help us to get some distance from our cravings and from our clingings. But it's the Four Noble Truths that tell us what to do then. So always keep that framework in mind. And remember, it's not just things arising and passing away. Things arise and pass away because you're making some of them arise and some of them pass away. And you want to be able to look into that. Always look inside for where the problem is. And that's where you see the solution.